will be taking place at Devon State. Is uh, you want to start with Will and all of John? It here. Tom? Yes. Bill? Here. Uh, Jim? Not here. Not here. Not here. Not here. And then John was here. Okay. Uh, for the approval of the agenda, <coughs> the only thing I've got that I've added in our new business is snow removal equipment. So I don't want to discuss that. Under old or new? It'll be under new. Where do you want to go? Uh, very top. I'm starting right above the uh, bills. Lights. It's taken us uh, roughly four years working with the FAA, but we finally got them approved and they're on and uh, working both, both ends of the runway. So that's just a report that they don't have to take them out to a fly rate, but this is still over. They didn't find any more. Not this time. Just ask them. They showed up. I agree. Okay. Okay. Uh, Skyline, Bob, you want to, anything you want to mention? Okay. Okay. Let's move on to new business. Snow removal equipment. Mr. Mammy, you want to speak to this a little bit, please? Uh, sure. Uh, presenting uh, to the board. And we'll just over here. We've got an agreement for services. Uh, conversation with the FAA, uh, previous board meeting. And the CIP, uh, we represented you with the FAA on trying to get the uh, snow removal equipment as part of this year's grant for the uh, non permanent entitlement money. And the FAA and the state uh, agreed. And so the next step is to get the environmental complete, which is part of the package in this, in this agreement. And that's the reason why I'd like to have an approval of this as soon as possible so we can get started. <laughs> so we can get the equipment advertised, environmentally approved. First thing you have to do is to get the environmental process submitted to the FAA approved before you can issue a grant. So uh, that, it's part of the um, services, scope of services, the, the first item, or actually item number two under the scope of work. First one is grant administration, which is preparing the application for the grant and filling all the paperwork to close out documents of the project. Then you got the environmental the phase, and then the next step, the contract documents. That's actually the bid documents to be able to get the uh, advertising uh, for the snow removal equipment. And the bidding phase, we'll, we'll walk through the bidding phase with the, whoever bidders you are and make recommendations for pair of bid tabulations. All the contract services and RBO uh, get the equipment ordered for procurement. And then the procurement phase is just uh, following up with the contractor, making sure uh, what you have 
advertised for and your intentions of receiving a snowball book is in fact what you're going to get. We'll follow that all the way through. The entire process we anticipate will take until January of next year. Uh, it takes a little while when you advertise one of these pieces of equipment before it gets uh, ordered and then back to the community for use. And that's where I want to start now because advertising and all the paperwork, everything you have to do in order to be able to get it here on site, I expect it's probably going to be October or November uh, before the equipment's actually here to be able to operate. And so that takes here you know, to operate at the airport. And so that uh, takes you right up to the edge of the winter months. Uh, you sometimes don't get snow in October. <coughs> so we would like to at least get started now so we can get the equipment that can be used this, this winter. So uh, I'm asking for your consideration to approve the agreement as written. Any questions? Uh, and so to carry through this a little bit, there's boiler break and the uh, four through six is the uh, basic work scope is in the appendices. Appendix A is the actual scope of work. Uh, there's six pages of the uh, boilerplate. Uh, you got the sign here tab at the end of the boilerplate. Um, all of the stuff that you, uh, you've agreed to on other projects before then. I'll point out a few things on the agreement just for your own information that you understand. Um, there is uh, a clause in here for insurance, uh, the general liability, and that's insurance that you're requiring us to hold, general liability insurance of a million dollars. And the workman's comp is actually statutory limitations, so whatever statutory limitations will be carried. But the, uh, li the uh, general liability insurance is, should be sufficient for a vehicle we anticipate the cost is going to be around $80,000. So a million dollars should cover that. Then uh, there's another section where you're talking about insurance that probably is of concern, should be a concern of you, the limitation of our liability. And on this project, we've limited our liability, professional liability. That's in case we made errors uh, or mistakes. Now we limit our liability a million dollars there as well. I figure that's enough for an $80,000 vehicle. So, those are probably the two items um, that most would <coughs> pick up and, and question to make sure that those are satisfactory enough to be able to uh, comply with all the terms that we would be representing you for. Then, of course, Appendix A. There's two pages of Appendix A, which covers all the scope of services from grant administration, environmental phase, the contract document phase, bidding phase, and then the procurement operational phase. Then uh, Appendix B is actually information services that are furnished by you to do the work, which are uh, just basic items, like if there is some uh, information that we need as far as the equipment, you'll tell us that this is the kind of equipment that you want. In other words, if you have a, a catalog cut from a manufacturer that says you'd like to see this in there, then that's, we would <coughs> expect you to give us that. We do additional research. But uh, if you have knowledge of something that you'd like to see in the spec, uh, we would entertain that. Uh, and, uh, Appendix C is the schedule. Grant, grant administration is throughout the maximum days of January 2012. That carries with January 31 when I just say the month. Uh, then there's the environmental phase. is usually the longest part of any project, and that's 45 calendar days to get that scheduled and completed. Uh, of course, that I've got a uh, on or until owner's next scheduled meeting. So, in other words, the 45 days takes you to the middle of a month. You really can't take any action until we come back to the board. So, that would be more than 45 days in that case. So, if we can get an approval prior to the 45 days are up and it becomes uh, the, you know, before that 45 days, then we can do that as well. Contract document phase, uh, same statement at the end. It's 30 calendar days for preliminary design. Uh, bidding phase, completing the documents for, adver for advertising and then going through the advertising process is 45 days then. And we expect that uh, 30 days after the vehicle is received 
Uh, we expect we're going to have a period of time where we're reviewing the equipment, uh, testing it out, going through test procedures, making sure it's the equipment you have, uh, in fact, wanting to have on the airport. And that's 30 calendar days, and a maximum to that would be up to January 31st of 2012. Then Appendix D is the actual compensation. And uh, the compensation is the maximum, uh, the uh, fee not to exceed totaling everything that's listed there is $16,690. And then Appendix uh, D1 is the, uh, the section where it just gives you, if there's something else that is uh, not part of the agreement and you decide you want to add, uh, something into the project that is representatively closely related to the actual scope of this work, then the uh, additional services would be rendered at hourly basis using these hourly rates that are shown. And then Appendix E is non-negotiable. <laughs> I say that because you can't take them out. That's the FAA clauses. <laughs> Appendix E is just basic clauses that are required for all federal contracts. So, and then a basic, in, the miscellaneous provisions are pretty much your uh, EEO compliance requirements and disadvantaged business and enterprise requirements and whatnot. Uh, in this case, in this project, because it's a piece of equipment that probably uh, be limited to disadvantaged business enterprise if there is any. Uh, usually in the equipment, uh, the only place where we can find disadvantaged business enterprise is in the supply side of the equipment. And this piece of equipment that I'm anticipating the type of equipment we're looking for at $80,000 is not going to have that. Uh, there, the other, uh, what limits it is basically is that uh, it is a Buy America clause in there for materials when we pull it together. It has to be Buy America. And it uh, re actually reduces the uh, areas where they can get the supplies. So, with that, I'd ask that the board consider approval of the, the agreement. Um, the first part I'd like to get started as soon as possible, and that's the environmental. So we can have the 45 days behind us so we can get the equipment in here by October or November sometime. Any questions? What would just be environmental consistent with Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. I'm not really sure. <laughs> Anymore in the day and age, this day and age, you're required to do an environmental for no matter what it is if it has any federal money involved. And what we're writing environmental on is looking at what we anticipate the materials to be at the factory. Uh, if there's any questions on the materials, if, the, if we anticipate, let's say, for example, we think that there's going to be a, a um, piece of equipment that's going to be manufactured by a tax company that we think can bid on the project. And if there has been some write-ups environmentally on that manufacturer for uh, disposable of materials improperly, hazardous materials and property. And so therefore, it would become more than what we call categorical exclusion. In general cases, we're anticipating this to be what's called a categorical exclusion. It's a list of items that have already been reviewed by the FAA to be excluded from the normal environmental review process. It's already been reviewed, in other words. So it's uh, it's about a nine, I think it's a nine-page write-up of checklist items for categorical exclusion. Is that as foggy as I can get it for you? Okay. <laughs> With these, with these grants, what is the federal local share the same as we're accustomed to? It is the 95% federal, yeah. and the state at this point is 1.25%, local is 3.75%. That may change. <coughs> there is 
if they get together and pass the budget state, <laughs> there is uh, roughly $2.4 million available to be able to bring the percentage back up to 2.5%. That is not a guarantee at this point. Right now it's only 1.25. Well, typically, what kind of equipment do you look at for this kind of Okay, actually, snow removal equipment could range from the amount that I'm talking about to over $300,000. The equipment that I'm looking at is a tractor type. It is a, a tractor kind that is uh, can be used on both ends so that you can mount a plow on one end and a blower on the other end. And uh, whatever decided distance or direction you want to use, that's the one you use. So you don't have to go, out, go back to the, to the building and uh, maintenance building and quick unhitch and then rehitch a uh, new piece of attachment to go out and do what you need to do. Normally speaking, it's the, uh, what you use is the plow first and center. When you get to, when you pu push it all to the edge, then you're using the blower to blow it over the lights. The blower displacement for this that we've had, we've used this, we've spec this, uh, generally speaking, we have spec this type of equipment in three different other airports in the state. If you want to look at an equipment that's going to be something similar, uh, you can go to the DeKalb County Airport, the Logansport Airport, and Randolph County Airport. And you can see those, generally the same piece of equipment. Talking 100, 150 horse. What are we talking about? Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't remember. I'm sorry. I should have asked. That. I don't remember. I know it's that a displacement. Me. That helps me size it. I understand. I I know the displacement of the blower is 75 foot. Uh, it is a 50 ton blower. That's it. And that that's pretty big. Yeah. I think it's a 250 horse. You're displaced, you're using the blower connected hydraulic wise on a uh, PTO to only one engine. So it takes quite a bit to be able to run it, the equipment, as well as the blower. I mean, it, it'll eat up the horsepower pretty quick when you get that thing up blowing full bore. I don't take me. Okay. okay. Right. It's either 175 or 250. I can't remember which one it is. It's a new quality. That's one of the items. There are others, but yes, generally speaking, a new hound would fit the parts. The bi directional. The uh, bi directional, you can turn the uh, <coughs> steering wheel and seat and everything to the opposite yeah. direction. Yeah. Yeah. And, but I don't know right now because I haven't written this back. Uh, there are certain things that makes a difference on what, what your desires are can change from one place to another. Uh, basic equipment, but then you add the attachments, and depending on what kind of attachments you're going to add to it, will depend, uh, will constitute what you have as far as your main, uh, main vehicle. And the other question is, next year when we get the new runway built, will it still be all right for the new runway? Yeah, I would say so. It's working famously at Ducal, which is 5,000 feet long. At uh, Logansport, I can't say that the Logansport that the uh, the equipment was used for the 5,000 foot runway. It did have uh, 4,000 feet at the time it was was used. Mm -hmm. And so your runway, uh, the, the the length is going to be 4,500 feet. 50, 50, I'm sorry, 5,400. Numbers back. 5,405 feet. And so it's relatively close to those. With width or all that same long? So that's the same width. Okay. okay. Yeah, 75 to 100 feet, depending where you're, where you're looking. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. And it, there's more to it. I mean, when we come back and you know, start laying catalog clips and stuff and looking down there, what do you really want written in the spec? So uh, I'm going to need all your help.
make sure we get what you want. She'd like approval tonight, is that right? Um, you, uh, I'm not forcing you to do it tonight. I understand it. Uh, I, you can uh, take until next month, if you, Monday, uh, next month, next meeting if you'd like. But you guys in favor of doing this? Would you walk a motion, yes, Mr. President? Yes, please. I, I move we approve this. I second. Okay, we'll call vote, John. We'll call vote, uh, Ed. Yes. Tom? Yes. Bill? Yes. Tom? Oh, yes. Okay. Mr. You want me to carry forward or do you? Uh, we got you on there to do some general. Go ahead and do it. Do it now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> One is that Aviation Association of Indiana is having their quarterly meeting coming up. I'd ask anybody to uh, come and join us. It's April the 14th it's at the Mount Comfort Airport, which has now changed their name. You'll see it being Indianapolis Regional. April the 14th, so it's going to be a good session. We've never assisted, we've never joined the organization. I mean, you're an individual member. Um, no, we had a meeting here a year or two years ago. Two, two, two years ago. Yeah. Two years ago. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we all for. There, there are board memberships for the whole board. Yeah, the membership, generally speaking, is uh, a uh, company based or organization based <coughs> membership, not an individual. asking me for the information because I'm treasurer. Don't worry. <laughs> um, That's <for> that <laughs> the uh, environmental, just to give you a status update where the environmental is, we have re received all updated comments, so that has been now complete. We're uh, going to be presenting the uh, second draft based on an updated comments to the FAA this Friday. So that's a good thing. We're moving forward on that part of it. You say you received all the big comments that's from the FAA to the engineer. No, the, uh, these are actually, the FAA asked us to update our, our coordination letters from all agencies. Okay. And okay. so we have passed that and we have received all the coordination <coughs> letters. So we have new dates on them. The other ones were of uh, age to them because of the time that's been taken to get this environmental process done. So we have we updated those. And I'd like to read a, uh, just read a, a little thing that came out of Forbes. I normally do this at the end of most of my presentations, so. And this is called, this is under the wheels up business of aviation. And this is called, why don't we just close down all those little airports? My cousin Karen just visited from Seattle. Many times as a child, we loaded up our Mooney aircraft and flew to the Northwest to visit. This time, Karen flew commercially to visit us here on the central coast of California. And as usual, I have many duties with our local airport, Oceano, L, this is location I done, L-52. On her first day here, I took her down to tour the airport and she she helped me clean the pilot's lounge and water plants. I told her of the events of the past year, having a real estate developer take Oceano Airport in its sights and want to destroy it. After all I said with some sarcasm, why don't we just close down all little airports? What value do these little airports have to their communities? We talked about the flying movie night we had in the summer, Oceano Airport Celebration Day, the second Saturday of May. Young Aviators Camp coming this summer, the annual Toys for Tots event, which allows the kids in our area to get extra toys under the tree. Finally, Karen asked, what is general aviation? What a wonderful question for a pilot. Ever get a package from Federal Express or UPS, general aviation? News and sports photography from the air, general aviation. 
At Oceano, it is easier to see the recreational flyers and students coming in for education. Unless you are at a general aviation airport, more often you might not see the examples of charitable flying. Angel Flight West, pilots and paws, flying Samaritans. What about rescue and supplies, general aviation? Many times, large airports can be damaged in natural disasters. In recent past, smaller general aviation airports have been able to play a key role in getting needed equipment, personnel, and supplies to the area. Karen was surprised that law enforcement and firefighting are also general aviation activities. She said, so pretty much when you see something flying in the sky, it is general aviation. I replied that, except for military commercial airplanes, she is correct. So why not close all these little airports? One might surmise that the land could be better used for commercial purposes, more houses or a park. Think again when you hear about someone getting a needed organ donor donation or a child flown to receive medical care or one of our four-legged friends finding a new forever home. General Aviation serves our communities. Moreover, those little airports are the vessel of that service. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Approval of bills for the packets. Which one? The one that's loose. I got two. <laughs> yeah. I, can, I updated it uh, after I had it printed out. I just didn't get a chance to stay with it. Okay. Uh, question. Yes. On the updated one that has the insurance. Yes, one's for professional okay. liability and one's for general liability. Okay. That does not have the aviation rotary fuel on it that the other one did have. Uh, $13.43 was up there on the other one. Right. That, that was, we took care of that last month. And this came back for some strange reason. Okay. Now they agree. Fifty bucks for street smart uh, That's our. It's our website. Website. Okay. To the. Uh, I see it now.